A group called the Foundation for Responsible Robotics recently put out a paper that looked at how sex robots will change over the next five to ten years. Noah Sharkey, an emeritus professor of robotics and artificial intelligence at the University of Sheffield and the co-founder of the Future Robotics Research Organization, thinks that we need to start taking their growing popularity seriously. In his opening remarks at the presentation of the new study, Mr. Sharkey said, People make fun of them, but they, the corporations, ship quite a lot and we'll see a lot more of them. Robots with silicone skin that feels warm to the touch have replaced the blow-up versions of modern sex dolls. These robots are controlled by artificial intelligence and have been programmed to act in ways that are meant to be like how humans act. The user can also customize their robot to fit their needs. This includes choosing the shape of its nose, the color of the robot's eyes, and even the type and color of its fingernails. But things are much scarier when you think about how many of the robots have personalities that would make a Stepford wife look like a modern person. For example, Realbotics robot owners can give their robots the traits, like shyness, that they find most endearing in other people. Then there are the sex robots made by True Companion. They're called Roxy Gold. These robots have personalities that have already been programmed into them. For example, Wild Wendy is described as adventurous, and Frigid Farah seems shy. Roxy Gold has a personality that is as close as possible to your own, says the True Companion website. This sentence is very interesting. So, she likes what you like, dislikes what you dislike, etc. She goes back and forth between them all day, just like real people do. She could be talkative, tired, or in the mood for something completely different. There are many troubling things about the rise of sex robots, not the least of which is that they're replacing real human relationships. However, the most troubling things are the rape-like connotations and the submissive female traits of making a move on cold Farah. This is because these qualities make it seem like sex robots are more likely to be abusive. On its website, True Companion said that Roxy was like a vibrator and that it was made for men only. In its article, the website asks, if women can have vibrators, why can't men have Roxy's? On the other hand, these sex robots aren't just a fetish or a different kind of sex toy. Their rise and increasing complexity point to something darker and deeper in our culture. A move away from the idea of equal rights for men and women toward a desire for sex with subjugation as an extra. Our culture has become a place where people want to have sex and are willing to submit if they want to. Even though the FRR found that sex robots are becoming more popular, they're still on the edge of consumer culture for the time being. The vast majority of men won't keep sex robots, of course. But information that comes in from the edges can tell us a lot about the spirit of the time we're living in. Also, many people don't do weird or offensive things until the free market gives them permission to do so. There isn't much chance that the fact that highly advanced sex robots are being made at the same time that a woman's rights are being attacked all over the world and that the President of the United States brags about sexually assaulting women is a coincidence. The reason for this is that there's a strong link between the two. The most disturbing thing about the TV show The Handmaid's Tale is not that the dead are shown hanging from nooses or having their eyes gouged out, but how real the picture looks. Setting up the Gilead Republic is a step in the right direction, but at this point, that step doesn't seem to be very important. The goal of these sex robots is to make them look as much like real women as technologically possible while still being the size of porn stars. The people who made them want them to feel like people when you touch them and move in a way that looks eerily like a living body. But it should be made clear that the robots' personalities have nothing in common with those of real women. They can't break up with their partner or get out of the relationship. They have no control over their lives, no history, nothing that even slightly suggests independence, and nothing that even slightly threatens the idea that they are completely subservient. To put it another way, they would make great slaves, or to use modern language, handmaidens. Researchers from the United States are worried about the availability of sex robots with artificial intelligence. They say that this is a growing psychological and moral risk for both individuals and society as a whole. They say that the government agencies that are supposed to keep an eye on the technology are too embarrassed to look into it. The researchers want something to be done to stop robots like these from being used in any way they want. Dr. Christine Hendren of Duke University said in an interview with BBC News that the stakes were very high. 
She said, some robots are set up to complain, to make a rape scene. Some robots are programmed to generate a rape scenario. Some of them are made to look like small children. One of the people in Japan who worked on this self-proclaimed pedophile who says he made the device to protect himself in case he ever hurts a real child. But does that make the behavior normal and give people a chance to do it when they should be stopped by just stomping it out? When this picture was taken, Dr. Hendren was giving a talk at the annual meeting of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. The new golden rule of robotics is that humans must win. People have asked that killing robots not be used in armed conflicts. Robots take care of damage in milliseconds. There are a lot of ads for sex robots on the internet. Real Robotics, an American company, has put a video on its website to promote the sale of its Harmony robot for between $8,000 and $10,000. It's a doll that's the same size as a real person and can blink, move its eyes and neck, and move its lips when it speaks. The head of the Harmony robot can be taken off and put on a number of different bodies. The mannequin, which has a Scottish accent, will say in a future tense, If you play your cards well, you'll have some joy and fun coming your way. And the company's founder and CEO, Matt McMullen, says that Harmony has AI that lets her get to know the person who uses the device. Mr. McMullen says she's gonna remember things about you, like what you like and don't like and the things you've done. Kathleen Richardson, who teaches at De Montfort University in Leicester about the ethics and culture of robots and artificial intelligence, wants this kind of marketing to be illegal. These businesses are making it sound like you don't have any close friends. You don't have someone to live with? We can make you a robot girlfriend, so don't worry. A healthy relationship with a girlfriend is built on intimacy, connection, and respect for each other. These things can't be made in any way, shape, or form by machines. I use her words. Professor Richardson is a consultant for a pressure group that was set up to keep track of how these things are being made. Experts in policy are working with people who want to stop the development of sexual robots to write laws that would make it illegal to say that companion robots could be a good replacement for human relationships. She told BBC News that she was worried, and she asked, are we going to keep making it normal for women to be seen as sex objects? If someone has a problem with a relationship in real life, they should talk to other people about it instead of making it seem normal that you can have a robot in your life and it can be as good as a person. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.